Being self-employed is one of the best career paths for highly sensitive people because you can control any aspect of your environment. But with everything, you also have to deal with different challenges. And today I want to share with you my personal roller coaster ride, how I became self-employed as a highly sensitive person. Let's just start this story in 2016 when I just finished high school. I can remember pretty well that I left school and the day I was done with school was to me at least some kind of relief. But I had the feeling that now, I think that's with many young people, right? Now the world is open. Now there is like so much I can do. And I remember like in the first week after finishing high school, and I remember when I finished school, I was at first traveling with a really good friend and we were traveling to the United States, to California, had an amazing road trip there and I just saw the endless possibilities of what's possible in life, right? Because America is great, right? At, the, at least that's what they say. <laughs> and I just felt this. I sensed it when I was there. I just uh, went to the supermarkets there. I just saw like how much they care, like many of them about the health. I just saw the extremes, right? A lot of people being super fit, super healthy, super motivated. Everything is organic. Everything is fitness uh, related. And on the other hand, you had like the other extreme of a lot of people being obese, um, just eating junk food all day long. So I was lying in that motel room somewhere in a national park in California. And that night I was thinking like, what could I do with my life? And I just thought maybe I should go and do something in the health related industry, right? So I just thought health is very important to me anyway, also because of personal uh, topics, personal things. I was dealing back then, health issues and struggles, there are a lot of episodes I did as well on topics like how you overcome a cold and how you can deal with viruses, how you can strengthen your immune system. Did all this stuff here on the podcast in German episodes. And I just thought, well, when I'm back, I try to become a personal trainer. I want to just, I just, I just want to found like a company in that area. I just want to do something on my own, not realizing why I wanted to do it, but I was just like sure that there is something that drives me wanting to do that. So when I came back to Germany from the States, I think just one or two days after, directly I was sitting down and thinking about how can I just get out there and work with people? How can, can I even help people? And I was figuring out like how to build a website and that came out of my own motivation. So when you listen now and you sense that you also have that, like you, uh, you sense that you're driven by something you want to put out there, then that's a really good sign that you may be someone who can be successfully self-employed. So when when I was in that position, building that website, I was also thinking like, okay, where can I get all the information I need to become a professional nutritional consultant or fitness consultant? And then I just was applying for studies, like for university. And in the end, this is where my path actually started, right? So. After school, I went to uni. I started studying nutritional and food sciences. I wanted to become a self-employed nutritional consultant. 
At least this is what I thought back then. So, and during the first years of university, I was thinking a lot about how do I actually want to live, right? So how do I actually want to work? Which role does my career play in that life? And I just came up with that vision and I just glued it technically on my wardrobe back then. So I just had this huge wardrobe and I just glued some pictures on it showing what I'd like to visualize. I just was, uh, I think I was a bit like infiltrated by the whole personal development scene back then. So I just thought, yeah, you have to do that, like build the mood board, build the vision board. And I did that. And um, on that mood and vision board, I clarified for myself how my life should look like in five years. And I said to myself, listen, Robert, when you are done with university, you will be self-employed and you will be free. This is what was very important to me back then. I didn't know why I sensed that so much, but for me, it was pretty clear that I wanted to do that and no matter what, right? So I had to find out a way. Two years later, in 2018, I was thinking about, okay, how can I market myself right I, because i realized oh at some point i might need to um definitely earn money if i want to make a living out of this and i just sense that i have to go out there right because i had this clear vision in my mind that i want to be free didn't know why so today i know why because i want to have that control over my environment, over the aspects of the environment, because I'm a highly sensitive person. But back then I just sensed, okay, I I want my space and I need that. I need to be autonomous in my career. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do and when to do it. So 2018, I decided to do a big step and step in front of the camera the first time. So I just started the YouTube channel. So my friend Bjorn, warm regards at this point he was pushing me to do my first youtube video in 2018 so i was starting a youtube channel back then and i was starting a podcast as well during summer of 2018 I was doing a blog and i had no idea how to do that but i was just looking up things on YouTube, was trying to self-teach me certain skills via video. And for me, it worked pretty well. So I developed the necessary skills pretty fast, but I think I was pretty lucky because I just had a really good understanding of how uh, technical things actually work. I'm a digital native because my parents were th so kind to introduce me to computers, technical stuff when I was super young. So I technically grew up with that. And the things I did on YouTube, on the podcast, they didn't really pay off in the beginning. So I, was, I wasn't making any money out of that. Um, but as the time frame shrinked and shrinked and shrinked, like the time between I was starting to want to become self-employed and the end of university where I wanted to have a working business being fully self-employed, the time shrinked and shrinked and was running away. So what could I do? So in 2019, I wasn't still making any money. So I was in a difficult position. I was already studying for nearly two and a half years. I was doing all that YouTube stuff, all that podcasting, but still wasn't earning, earning anything. But I needed money and I felt that when time ran off, 
When I was finishing university, I wanted to take responsibility for myself. I wanted to make my own money. I wanted to be free. So I didn't want it to be dependent on a system like uni. I just wanted to get out into the world. So I just thought, okay, now I need like, I need to try out new things. So I tried out a job at the local gym where I was already working out. And I have no idea if you have experienced that before, but to me, working in that job where I felt crazily useless, I thought like I was wasting my time in that job, which I actually did for just two weeks because I just, I just couldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. I hated it in a way. I just felt even panicky in that job because it well did not fit my needs at all. I had to quit that job as fast as possible. But what else could I do in that situation, not earning any money from the podcast or the YouTube channel because I had no idea how to win clients that pay me anything. And on the other hand, not being able to work in a normal job, I would say, in a, in a side job at the gym, really struggling with that. So what other options did I have? Back then, my girlfriend at that time was also looking for a job herself. And she found herself a job at uni, was quite happy with that. And it worked out pretty well for her. But I was still searching for it. I just couldn't understand how she feels comfortable in such a job situation. But I felt the pressure on the other hand that I had to try something else because there must be a solution, right? There is always a solution. So I was just looking online at that time because I knew from my pre previous experience from blogging and podcasting, which I really enjoyed by the while, that I wouldn't do it today here if I wouldn't enjoy it or wouldn't have enjoyed it back then. I was looking for possibilities maybe in that area. I had no idea. Like maybe there's someone, I don't know, looking for someone who writes a blog for them, something. And then I found out about like freelance platforms and those kind of things. And I just found a couple jobs where people and companies were actually looking for a remote freelance writer, texter, who's writing and checking texts and content for their blogs. And I was like, wow, that's perfect. I just could do that for my bed. I don't have to go anywhere. No one is telling me what to do. I mean, it's not like paid super well, but I mean, I didn't make any money before, so why not just try it? A couple hundred bucks a month is better than nothing, right? So I just applied for a couple ones and one agency actually reached out back to me and asking me for more details. So I just sent them, yeah, this is my experience. I also do a podcast and the blog and the blog is getting a few visitors, but nothing really crazy. So they texted me back, hey, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for, <laughs> right? A person who's like not that much successful at the moment, who's maybe a student, probably this is what they thought, and who can help us out write that blog, who's willing to learn and to create us some great content. So I was up for that. And I just got a, um, I, th I think my, my first freelance contract with them, where I was just doing texts. And this is the first time where I made like a couple hundred euros a month from texting, right? And as I was moving in that direction, which worked out pretty well for me in the beginning because it was a job which was pretty like suiting my needs actually, I just felt quite comfortable doing that just from home or from the library. And I was texting for that agency. And one thing I just realized today is how lucky I have been in that situation. Like I didn't see all the advantages I had 
as a student, right? Because I could try myself out without having too many responsibilities because I didn't have a family back then. I was not married. I didn't have to pay uh, for a house. I didn't have to um, pay for my rent. Like it was a really luxury situation back then. So what happened then between 2019 and 2020 is that the environment and the people I spend a lot of time with developed over time. So I was more and more getting into marketing here, just realizing that I can earn money with writing texts. The agency was also offering me to work on further projects because I was getting better. I was getting them the first results. And I could compare that with my own as well because I was running the podcast and the blog. So I knew how things worked out step by step, right? So I saw like results on FEO. I thought results on my listener base. I didn't see the results in the money still. So I was not earning money from the podcast. I was trying to quite hard, but the money I was earning was actually coming from my servers I was doing for the agency. So then I was doing projects with them that worked out pretty well. They also offered me a further education. So I was even learning more from them. My friends and people I spend time with also develop marketing skills. So the whole environment was like moving in that direction. I just was surrounded by a lot of people like out of a sudden. I don't know if that's kind of a law of attraction thing, but I think it's more that when you do something, when you focus your energy on something, you and it, and it feels good to you, then you attract more of these things because you spend more energy doing that and spend more energy investing in these kind of people, situations and environments. So this is also a really great tip if you want to become self-employed. Try to spend a lot of time, and if you're not in that situation already, try to find people who are also self-employed, who are also on that path of becoming an entrepreneur or becoming self-employed. I see that in a lot of self-employed people, especially in self-employed HSPs, they spend a lot of time with people who are really like-minded, who are really on the same path, right? It makes you feel comfortable, it makes you learn faster, and it makes you feel secure, which is absolutely important if you want to become self-employed because security and control are such important things for most HSPs. And I sensed that quite a lot that I was struggling with that. But then having a safe environment based on amazing relationships with people who are going through the same struggles at the same time, that was absolutely essential and very helpful in the years, like uh, four years, three years after I just started, because this is the time where a lot of struggles can appear. Obviously, it's always a roller coaster ride if you want to become self-employed, that's for sure. But especially like in the beginning time when you do not have the experience of how things work out, that's very important. In 2020, also during COVID, but I don't want to talk about this right now, I just finished university and I was doing a lot of projects for the partner agency I was working back then. Um, and I decided to move to Berlin with two of my closest friends also entrepreneurs who started really young on their own journey. And we wanted to work together in a way, or at least like learn together from each other. When I arrived in Berlin, at first, as also maybe like a tiny side story here, if you're highly sensitive, maybe you experienced that before. I was arriving alone in the first couple of weeks and arriving in a completely new and 
I have to say now, like super overwhelming environment was really difficult for me. And I think may, many of you may also struggle with that when you move to a new place, to a foreign place, especially like overwhelming a metropolis, then you sense that kind of panicky feeling. You might sense that. You sense that um, you feel like not belonging to that place, not belonging to that city. You, you feel that you're like an alien in a city full of people you don't even know. And that can be like really like causing over arousal. So it may take some time to settle in in such a new place. If you're moving to a new city, being alone, I have to say be careful with that. But I think some people might cope with it a bit better. I also know some HSPs who like to travel, like alone especially, and that's pretty easy for them. So I remember when I was settling in in Berlin, especially in the first weeks, I saw all of these new tasks coming in all these new new responsibilities so i had to check for my insurances i had to check for my taxes i was self-employed so i had to check um, for my company technically so a lot of new responsibilities also i was calculating how much money i would now need as being self-employed, being on my own to technically survive, not being a student anymore, not having like the advantages of being a student, which I did not realize back then, like not paying a lot of insurances, like spending way less money than being self-employed and being on your own, being finally in the real world. And if you, be, if you want to become self-employed, say, not out of university or school, but out of your current job, which, is, which may be unfavorable for you, then this is what you have to expect in that situation, that you have to deal with all these new topics. And they all come at the same time. So there are new insurances, there are new taxes, right? You have to take care of tax, you have to take care of the responsibilities, which all like overcome when you found a company, when you decide to become self-employed. And that can be pretty overwhelming. So again, this is why it's super helpful if you have like a solid network, if you're surrounded by a lot of like-minded people who are also self-employed, who also struggle with the same issues at the same time. Luckily, I was in that situation back then. But still, you have to know that you have to figure out these things. And I think at first it can be overwhelming, but looking back to it, I have to say that it's definitely doable if you really want that. Um, but make sure to check out these topics before and to slowly learn about all the things you have to learn about. You have to learn, I give you a checklist, you have to learn about taxes. That's very important. Like check out how does the tax system work for you as a self, as a self-employed in the country you're listening to right now. Um, check out also documents. Like what do you need if you want to found a company if you want to become self-employed, which are the responsibilities right, you have to keep up with. And also really important, definitely be realistic with things, right? Because I was thinking, yeah, could work out, maybe not. So I was in that situation sitting in Berlin, I remember that. And at some point I was looking on my bank account and it just had like 300 bucks left in total. So I was technically broke in that situation. So to avoid that, you can definitely try to prevent it by being realistic and calculating to figure things out before you just jump in self-employment. So it's really important 
to structure that before. During that time, summer 2020, I also had to make the decision what I wanted to do because podcast, blog, nutritional stuff was still not making a lot of money. Like I was doing just a couple euros a month, but I also realized that I do not really want to work with these people I was working back then because it was not really suiting me and my personal um, expectations of how nutritional consulting would look like. So I had to decide what to do and I just put down two lists on the one side nutritional consulting and the other side marketing and then I just like um, put down the different points, different aspects of two sides. And I just realized pretty quickly that it's probably like also the most realistic option to go on with marketing because I just had to make money, obviously. Like if you want to survive in that world, um, you have to adapt to that system. You have to play the game and I also didn't like to work with the people I was working with, so I decided to continue marketing. And this is also something which is pretty helpful to think about. When I think back how I became self-employed, I just had to realize that things I had on my mind, like the visions of like what I could offer to the world, to the people, my ideas of my services did not eventually mean that the market and the people you want to work with actually needs them, right? So it's always a lot of testing involved here, but also it's very important to be realistic, to have a look, a precise look at the market and do not try to deny, that's, that's really important now. If you want to become self-employed, denial is a really difficult topic. You have to be honest with yourself. If you see that, that something is not working out, even if you wish right, that it would work out, does it actually work out? That's the question. Is the market actually wanting your service or your idea or your project. Maybe the timing is wrong. Maybe the target group has different needs. Maybe there is no money in that market. So it's really important to figure that out and to be honest with yourself if the market actually needs your service. And you can try that out by just looking around who actually makes money in your space. What is that person doing? Also important, like how long did it take that person to get there? Because there are obviously a lot of um, people who sell courses, online courses on nutritional topics, on fitness consulting, but it took them years to make a living out of that. Do I have that time and that energy to spend on a project um, to spend years on it before I make any money out of it? Uh, because I did not have that time. I did not have that energy. So I had to find a quicker solution. So I had to change my offering and I had to change the whole industry, right? So be realistic of what's possible from your current position, from your network, from your skill set, and most important, from what actually the market needs and wants. So after that realization, I was step by step slowly getting one client, then another one. And I also got a huge opportunity to work with a partner agency I still work with today, really happily um, with that work relationship with this agency in Berlin still, um, which I got recommended um, actually from a close friend. So it's really important to have that network and to slowly find your way in, I would say, what suits to your actual needs and your actual position. 
So in 2020, during that time, I and also my self-employed friends to become more professional in our appearance as someone who does marketing services. So we try to focus more on specialization, right? That was our strategy or that is my strategy until this day, being a specialist in SEO services and consulting. And let's also talk about coaching because I know that there is a lot of, I would say, there are a lot of shady coaches out there and there is a lot of... Um, there's a lot of a bad aura, I would say, in really kind words around um, the subject of coaching, especially when it comes to business coaching and consulting. And, you know, everyone is like high price guru these days selling you some shady shit online. But we thought about it and I was not, I was honestly not a fan um, doing that, but we still decided to do it together and uh, sharing a coaching and a course to develop new skills. And I think like after doing that, would I recommend it to you doing a coaching, uh, especially like a business coaching, if you want to become self-employed? I have to say, maybe you don't want to hear that answer, but it depends. So if you feel like you're someone, especially if you're an HSP, um, I guess you feel that you have a strong opinion on that topic. Like you feel, oh, I don't need a coach, right? Why would I do that? Like what, what, who would he or she telling me? But I think that's, there's also a lot of ego involved. So on the other hand, it could be like pretty helpful to get some help from the outside. I think like that a coaching definitely can accelerate your whole learning process. And a coaching, a good coaching also helps you to implement the right um, the right learnings in the right positions, right? You get all this information for free. Like you can have everything for free on the internet, but to implement and integrate all the tiny things in the right position and finishing that puzzle, I think this is what a good coach should do. Like you can get like, to, to put it in that metaphor, say you know that there are all these kind, kind of puzzle pieces and you can also start to put them together, but a coach actually gives you this bird's eye perspective and just tells you, oh, this maybe you put this piece in that position. That's especially interesting, not only to see in the business coaching aspect, but also to see in the therapeutical context when you work with a coach slash therapist who actually helps you to understand the bigger picture. So I think it can be pretty helpful to do a coaching Business coaching also might helpful. What it uh, might be helpful, what it actually does is, I think, accelerating the learning process. I think that's that's it. Like you're saving time, um, hopefully also money if you want to start a business. But it's definitely up to you. So when you're doing good, when you have a good network, you're already making money. You're happy with that. That's totally fine. If you struggle with that a lot. Coaching groups can also help you to find the right people. Obviously, look out for not too shady coaches. I wouldn't do that, honestly. But I mean, there are also really good coaches out there. So definitely check it out and then decide what feels best to you. Then 2021 went by and I was definitely working a lot on sales strategies to like get more clients over time to build up solid income. That's actually what I was trying to and realizing in 21, 2021 and 2022, especially how difficult it is for me as an HSP to do proper sales, right? Because you may also see yourself struggling with that or you see that as a huge challenge 
for you becoming self-employed as a highly sensitive person to deal with the rejection and the intense emotions you feel when you try to reach out to people, whether you do it via phone or via email or video or whatever you do, you just directly go to the companies. It's a huge challenge. I think that's one of the, the, the biggest challenges for self-employed HSPs, at least for many of them, is to actually generating new clients and getting new contracts and finally closing clients. So if you are scared of that in the future, I can definitely understand that. If you think like, okay, I want to become self-employed at some position, but I don't want to do the salesy stuff. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to do the calls. I hate like exposing myself and I hate putting myself out there. I can understand that 100% and it's really difficult, I have to say that. So what can you do if you do not want to do cold calling, if you do not want to feel exposed? Um, what you definitely can do is start as a freelancer or when you work like in a, in a context with customers, like you're offering yoga courses or you're a fitness trainer, whatever you want to do, like you're a, a music teacher. Uh, when you work with people, so it's always helpful on the one hand to focus on more kind of inbound marketing. If that's a solution for you, putting yourself out on social media, putting yourself out uh, on your blog. So you're a bit behind the curtain because you do not have to be that offensive in your sales strategy. But be aware that this also may take a lot of time to get results. You get fast results if you just call someone. If you just call 100 people, you might have a new client done. But it's really difficult. Understand that. It's really related to that inner fear or that, that, that instinct right, of rejection. And what also, secondly, is pretty helpful if you focus, when you're self-employed, on long-term contracts instead of just one-time projects. Because if you do that, then you might have a really steady income. So instead of trying to acquire new customers every month, try to focus on holding and serving your actual customers you're working with already on a monthly basis because this way you can um, you can develop more secure income and your business will feel more sustainable and more predictable which gives you again more control and more security so and with these learnings i want to finally conclude this episode so again if it might seem like a huge challenge for you to become self-employed as an HSP, I can totally understand that. And it's true, there are a lot of challenges that may appear on that roller coaster ride. But if you sense that it is a possible great way for you to go through this life, to go through this world, on a self-employed career path because it suits so well to your needs and you feel comfortable doing that, you feel like you want to control your environment a bit more, then it's definitely worth a try, in my opinion. I would say just take your time, but slowly getting into it is the best path. If you're already working in a job, then just start being self-employed as a side hustle, learn the skills necessary, and then jump over. If you feel secure enough, definitely focus on long-term contracts, really important if you're offering a service, um, if you are a consultant, if you're something similar, definitely focus on more steady income instead of one-time projects because it gives you more security, 
And one huge advice in the end of this episode, never ever, if you want to become self-employed, you just say, well, okay, I'm out of my current job, I just go for it. Never ever saw off the branch you're actually sitting on and which gives you maybe money and security, even if you do not like the job, even if it's an unfavorable job for you. But it will be a really uncomfortable situation if you realize after cutting off that branch that you're now self-employed without making any money because that really can cause a lot of panic. So slowly get into it, especially as an HSP. And I'm sure if you're really driven by that, if you really feel that that's good for you and suits your needs, I think you will definitely become successful. If you enjoyed this episode, if you like this story, this talk and everything around it, definitely let me know in the comments here on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen. And then also think about the book list I put in the description. Um, I think I also added some career books now. And I see and speak to you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.